Welcome back to another episode of the North Star Takes Podcast. I'm Bailey Pawlicki, he's Jacob Alberta, and we're a Minnesota sports podcast. If you're a Minnesota sports fan, please click the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And today we're going to be talking Minnesota Wild because if you haven't heard the news, Kirill Kaprizov is back in the state, um, got out of Russia, and hopefully, you know, hopefully there's no more controversy when it comes to that. But as for now, he's here, and uh, we're just going to kind of get into the season expectations now that, you know, the biggest domino in the Wilds offseason has fallen because we really didn't know if they are going to be able to get him back or not. And if he wasn't going to be back, they were probably in for a really rough season. So to kind of recap the major moves they've made, uh, they traded Kevin Fiala to the Los Angeles Kings, which we all knew was going to happen, um, that they were going to get rid of Fiala. The Wild re-signed Mark andre Fleury, but then that forced a Cam Talbot trade because Talbot and his agent were unhappy with um, having to split time, basically, with Fleury, not be the true number one option, which was just really strange, I thought, because I always thought Cam Talbot was such a great guy, but I guess you never really know who they are. So, no. um, And now, now Kirill Kaprizov is back, so... Um, I guess, what are your expectations for the Wild now this season? I know we're still, you know, a month out from training camp even, but, I mean, do you do you think this is still a playoff team? Do you think they still have enough talent? What are your thoughts? Yeah, on the surface, uh, before we dive into it, I guess, obviously having Kaprizov greatly changes expectations in comparison to if we didn't. If yes. we didn't, man, we'd be one of the worst teams in the league. Well, maybe not one of the worst, but, like, probably a bottom 10 team clearly not a playoff team because this guy makes this team go. So, yeah. obviously, having the pre-stop in the mix, I think that makes us a playoff team. I don't think we're quite what we were last year. We're literally top five as far as um, overall standings go. I mean, we had 113 points, easily a franchise record. So, like, that's a hard season to top. Having 113 points is incredible. We won 53 games. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's pretty high bar to set. So, obviously, I don't think we're going to get there again. That's pretty hard to do in back-to-back seasons. But I still think we're a playoff team. I think we hover right around that 100-point mark. I think we're probably – it really depends how the division shakes out. I don't mm-hmm. quite know how good the rest of this division is going to be. Obviously, Colorado defending Cup champs. But then yep. you look past that. St. Louis, I think they'll still be formidable. Uh, I mean, we had five playoff teams for our division. We had ourselves, and then we also had Nashville. We also had Dallas. So it's like mm-hmm. um, Winnipeg was a non-playoff team, but like they're getting better. So it kind of depends. I think we're right on that fringe where – could be the third team in the Central or probably a wild card. So I think we'll still be solid, not quite as good. I think it's, I think it's to a variety of factors because think about the biggest news of the offseason outside of Caprice off coming back. It's Drayton Fiala. I know everybody saw it coming. Everybody knew it was going to happen contractually. We just couldn't make it work just because of our yeah. cap space <laughs> uh, or lack thereof. And the fact that that's why we couldn't do anything for HC either other than bring Flurry back. So Drayton Fiala, that's a huge <laughs> subtraction especially offensively for this team. I mean, if it wasn't for Caprice offseason, Fiala himself, he set the record for points in a single season by a wild right. player ever. So, like, that goes back 20 years. So that's a lot of production to replace. And you kind of think we have some in-house options that look pretty good that you feel could be top six guys. You got Marco Rossi. You got Adam Beckman. I think both those guys look pretty promising. So they could obviously contribute. They had a cup of coffee last year in the league, but now mm-hmm. they'll definitely get their feet wet. But obviously that's kind of a lot to expect out of rookies in their first NHL season. Right. So it's going to kind of have to be a collective effort. You kind of wonder how that second line will shake out too. I think Boldy hopefully won't fall into a sophomore slump and he'll just continue to evolve. He had a very stellar rookie season. So yes. I'm excited about what we got there. And then you think about the goaltending. You mentioned bringing Flurry back here and trading Talbot. Now, trading Talbot, that's kind of a – it feels like a pretty risky thing to do. Obviously, he wasn't happy, so your hand was kind of forced. But right. uh, bring back Flurry, especially an aging guy, had a lot of good seasons, obviously, in his career. He's won how many cups, and he's won a Vezina Trophy even as recently as two years ago. So, like, mm-hmm. this guy can play, but he's getting older. And Talbot, last year, he was a top-ten goalie by, by the most uh, – basic goalie metrics, really, when you consider save percentage, he was top 10. As far as wins go, he's top 10, so he's very reliable. And he wasn't quite as old as Flurry. where Flurry, the best you can get out of him, I think, is probably 55 games, or max, you're talking about 60. And like, right. that's, he hasn't done that in a little while, so like that's kind of a lot to ask out of him. So then you're considering Gustafson, who right now is the back goalie. I don't know if we'll look to make a move to basically change it up if he doesn't look good early on but like this guy if you're counting on flurry let's say best case scenario plus 55 games then you're still accounting for this guy gustafson playing like 27 games and that's how many games he's played total in his nhl career so like mm-hmm. a very unproven guy had a good rookie year played about seven games and it was kind of flashing fan good start 
They allowed about two goals a game, a little over, at a over 93 save percentage. But then he considered last year, he played about 18 games, and he was terrible. Uh, albeit right. these two seasons were on an Ottawa team that was bad. So, like, it, it kind of is what it is. And still not quite sure what you know about him. I mean, he's former second-round pick, 2016. So, like, him playing, man, th- th- playing that many games, it's kind of a lot to count on. Yep. So, man, that, that, there's just a lot to unpack here. But, yeah, Flurry hopefully will stay healthy. Otherwise, that could really sink us, too. And then defensively, we're not really changing up much, but I, which kind of disappoints me because our, our defense was bad. And mm-hmm. I – I don't I don't like a lot of these a lot of these defensemen that we have. But fun fact that I found today, actually, Bailey. Do you wanna guess or maybe you already know this, but who was eighth overall plus minus in the entire NHL last year among all players, no matter position, entire NHL, who was eighth in the league? Uh Jonas Brodine. No, oh, good guess. But Alex Goligoski. Oh, really? I think <laughs> you know, I think I did know that because I, I always remember Russo tweeting about how good Goligoski's plus minus was. Yeah, so like Clearly, I I don't I don't love Golgowski, but like that that certainly says something. You're eighth overall among all players in the NHL, and then I, th- I think I saw Spurgeon was 19th, and I think 21st was Hartman. Kirill was 29 last okay. year, and then it considered too like all all these guys. There's a lot of career seasons last year that are pretty hard to repeat. Like Felino yeah. and Eric Snick blew their previous high marks and their career out of the water. So, like, I uh, I still think there's something more there. That feels a little bit more sustainable. But Foligno's been in the league 10 years now. I'm a little bit more – I don't think that – I don't think that's going to happen again. And then Hartman, I don't think he's going to do that again. Matt's, he's getting older. He literally had the most points in in a single season of his career last year. I feel like that's not sustainable. But, granted, Hartman and Zuccarello, they play with – uh, top five player in the NHL. So, like, yeah. that's that's going to help you a lot and help you sustain any sort of success you had last year playing with the same guys, same line, same familiarity. So, I, I again, there's there's so much to consider here. There's a, a lot of things that could improve or get worse, but I, I'm going to turn it over to you, man. I've been rambling on <laughs> here for a while, but I want to hear what you have to say. What, what do you think expectations are going into this season? No, you laid it out perfectly, man. I, I agree with you. I think they're they're bordering on maybe being the third team in the division, maybe being a wild card. I'm still not gravely concerned about that Pacific division, although I do think the Kings are definitely getting better, especially now when you add Fiala into that mix. Sure. They were a playoff team this last year, so you got the Kings out there. Um, Edmonton. Edmonton. I'm trying to think. Who, Calgary. I mean, I don't know if Calgary's really going to bounce back because they made a big trade this offseason. Yeah. Um, shook up their roster a little bit, so – You know, I'm not exactly sure how that Pacific Division is going to look, but there's no one too threatening over there. Um, So I could definitely see us grabbing a wild card spot. But, you know, it's just tough because after having such a great, amazing, fun season last year, definitely probably the most fun wild season in the team's history so far, um, this team is going to take a little bit of a step back due to the salary cap restraints from the buyouts of Parisi and Suter. Bill Guerin knew this was coming. He knew the cap crunch was coming all along. He knew he was going to be trading Kevin Fiala because they just simply could not afford to pay him. Um, you know, you're going to lose lose like 85, 87 points, whatever he had last season. If Carroll wouldn't have been back, you'd lose another 100-some points. Like, that'd be almost 200 points worth of, you know, offense that you'd be missing. Luckily, Carroll is back. Um, but, yeah, where, where, where else are you going to get that goal-scoring punch? Is Matt Boldy capable of maybe scoring, you know, 25 to 30 goals? I mean, I'd hope so, but we have to see it first, I guess. Marco Rossi, uh, very intriguing talent as well. But like you mentioned, a lot of these guys that had career seasons, it's just really hard to see them uh, getting back to that point again. So maybe Eric Sinek, but he's also going to be playing on that grinding type line with Greenway and Felino, where scoring isn't necessarily the top priority. So True. Um, it sucks that they're going to probably take a little bit of a step back. But at the same time, Garen has just been absolutely knocking these drafts out of the park. Whether I don't know if it's really him or Judd Brackett. I see a lot of praise for Judd Brackett, who's like their top scout. But, um, I mean – they have the top prospects tr- prospect pool in all the NHL, which is insane. So, you know, if Wild fans, if, as long as this team can kind of stay competitive, you know, maybe keep getting in the playoffs, keep getting that experience. Um, in two and th- two to three years when this cap crunch is done, I mean, this team is going to be ready to pop. They're going to have some draft picks ready to go. They're going to have Jesper Wallstedt, a stud prospect goalie, ready to go. He'll be taking over for Marc-Andre Fleury. Um, they have a bunch of defensive prospects, that Brock Faber that they got in the Fiala trade. Sure. Um, also some in-house guys that are already in the Iowa, you know, in the farm system. So it's like we have all sorts of intriguing talent that's, you know, down in the minors or it's still, you know, playing in world juniors, whatever the case may be. But, um, man, it's, 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 it's crazy that, you know, 
how Bill Guerin has done. I mean, he's definitely been a little controversial, no doubt about it. He tells it like it is. Um, he doesn't lie about anything, which I give him credit for. I mean, he's just – he's as straightforward as it gets. And Straight shooter. Love it. Exactly, and that's what fans love. And so, yeah, we're going to – you know, if we take a little bit of a step back, it's okay. They're not going to suck as long as they have Kirill Kaprizov, as long as he stays healthy, I should say. Um so, yeah, I, I'm okay with them taking a little bit of a step back, knowing that in two to three years they're really going to be ready to make a run, and it's going to be more sustainable this time because they'll be they'll be out of the cap crunch. They'll have all sorts of space to spend on free agents, on <clears throat> their own players that they're going to have to extend. So I think they're sitting in a pretty good spot overall. It, it just sucks that they're going to be in a little bit of a down spot here. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's got weather to still in this year. If it doesn't happen this year, that's all right. Like you said, we got the top prospect pool in the league, so – we're going to give guys a lot of good looks here. A lot, a lot there. You'll see a lot of development from Boley to Rossi to Beckman. I mean, all these guys who could figure a huge part in this team come yes. a few years from now. Like I said, we could be really, really ready to pop. And you have that cap space again. You can add supplemental pieces to your co- young core that you're building here. And that that's very exciting. I think it's just all about basically doing enough where you keep Kaprizov happy too. He wants to stick around longer yes. than the his current contract he's on. He's obviously want to stack it and make him a wild player the rest of his career, or at least I mean the good majority of it. So I I think that's really what's important right now. And I'd also say too, it, talking about steps back as far as like we we're top five in the league and goal scored last year. Like that's yeah. it's pretty hard to repeat. But you think about where we could kind of make up ground as far as what we lacked last year. I would hope our power play and our penalty kill couldn't get any worse. Like our special teams, right. I think we're really going to emphasize here, hopefully uh, early on, like we get in the training camp, making that much better than it was just because we we're, I think we we're 18th in power play percentage, which is very much. Mm-hmm. And I think we get better there. And the penalty kill certainly could be in 25th in the league. That was terrible. Like that, that can't happen. And then hopefully we have some guys who can, win some face-offs for once no, just because it yeah, think about last year I, I looked at it as a team we ranked like 27th out of uh what was that 32 teams in the league and in, in uh face-off win percentage so that's terrible that gives you a lot less opportunities to begin with so like if you improve at that you improve at uh penalty kill and i can have so many goals when you're shorthanded and then honestly scoring goals when you have an extra man i i get when you consider the extra man too i think we're not going to have quite the comeback ability which is kind of unfortunate at the end of games when we went six on five felt like we scored a lot of goals in those situations like historically i think we're one of the best teams at that ever so i that'll be a step back but just improve the special teams i think that's going to help matters too but i they better have a good plan for that as far as game planning going into the season making some really good units for it just so we're not we're not struggling as bad as we were last year because that was really frustrating yeah, no kidding. And you'd hope an addition of Marco Rossi can kind of kill two birds with one stone. I mean, he he was a good power play uh, player for the Iowa Wild, and he's also good at draws. So yes. um, you hope a guy like that can really help solve a couple different issues there. But um, it'll be interesting to see what they do. I mean, before we know it, it'll be training camp time, and um, will Freddie Goudreau still be on the second line, or you know, sure. how are they going to do that with Boldy and Rossi? And um, you know, is Ryan Hartman still going to center that first line? My assumption would be yes, but I guess you never really know for sure. So um, any other final thoughts from you before we take off here about the wild? Yeah, you know, kind of a little while to go before uh, we get ramped up and get ready for this next NHL season. But I think there, there's a lot to like about this wild team. Just not hard, hard to uh, – I think it's hard to pick yourself up after the season we had last year and kind of deflating the right. flight finish that it was and – kind of just got to run it back now. Like, that's that's pretty tough to replicate success pretty closely. So I think we just got to temper expectations for now. But albeit, I, I still think we have some fun players to watch on a night-in, night-out basis. It's going to be great to watch the development of Boldy and Rossi and Beckman and all these guys before our eyes. Exactly. At the very least, they still have a fun team with intriguing pieces. Sure. So it's not like the old, boring, wild teams of the Prezi Super yeah. era that were getting old and maxed out. So Exactly. Uh, Yeah, it'll be exciting, but that will do it for this edition of the North Star Takes Podcast. Please click the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Feel free to give us a follow on both Twitter and Instagram, and let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. What are your expectations for the Wild this season? Do you anticipate them taking a step back? Do you think they can kind of stick around where they were last year? And do you think they can make any progress in the playoffs if they do make it? So until next time, thanks for watching. 